Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Chris M. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. I just wanna highlight something from this chart. This is for annual net income for Toyota and Tesla. So Tesla did $12.5 billion in gap net income in 2022, while Toyota was just shy of $20 billion. So if we throw a 50% growth rate on Tesla's net income, that would take them to roughly $18 billion in 2023. So if Toyota stays similar or maybe even declines, that could be the year when Tesla surpasses Toyota in annual net income. They've already done it for Ford and they've already done it for GM. Just because I know many of you have been eagerly awaiting the answer to this question, does Tesla's light show also show up on a trailer? The answer is yes. Marco, our resident supercharger detective, has told us permits have been submitted for an eight stall site at Pepsi's facility in Fresno. Adding eight EV chargers for Tesla semi trucks along with the necessary equipment required to operate. So, fingers crossed, whenever this install happens, that maybe we'll learn a little bit more about these mega chargers and how they work. I'm sure many of you will remember this tweet from Elon summer of last year. He said, Looking for hardcore street fighters, not white shoe lawyers like Perkins or Cooley who thrive on corruption, there will be blood. After that tweet, we reported on some turnover in the division, and now Tesla has hired Brandon Earhart to oversee the legal department. Previously, he worked at Dish. So here he is, Brandon Earhart, general counsel and corporate secretary at Tesla. Previously, he was the general counsel at Dish for 20 years. And there's no speculation or sources in the know here as Tesla Twitter made it official, also adding that Dina Eskin will continue in a leadership role in Tesla Legal. Elon's definitely not playing games with this one. He said this team will directly initiate and execute lawsuits. The team will report directly to me. Elon's commitment, I think this is very important to keep in mind for lawsuits in the future. We will never seek victory in a just case against us, even if we would probably win, that's a big claim, and we will never surrender or settle an unjust case against us, even if we will probably lose. Absolutely love it, if you can back it up. It looks like Tesla China has raised the price on the Model Y rear wheel drive 2000 yuan, which is only about 300 US dollars. Definitely a minor change, but it's not nothing. I just wanted to add some commentary to these new Model Y all wheel drive 4680 structural packs that are now in Tesla's inventory available for purchase that yes, are now $4,000 cheaper than the long range Model Y. Previously, they were only $1,000 cheaper. So Troy Teslake has been saying that Tesla in Austin is making about 1,000 of this car per week. I've heard it's closer to 750 per week, AKA they're making about one of these for every five of the Model Y long range or performance. Meaning that if Austin is right now making around 3,500 Model Ys per week, about 700 of them will be the Model Y all wheel drive with the 4680s. It's important though, because whether it's 750 or 1,000, it's more than a few hundred, which it was not too long ago, which is good news for 4680 progress. We did get the production data for Tesla China in January. It came in at 58.2 thousand, even despite being shut down for a week. But I just wanted to show you that the inventory is now down to about 16.5 thousand after this month where Tesla cleared through roughly 7 thousand units of inventory from December. But as I've said, I still want another month or two of data before really reading into these numbers too much. From Drive Tesla Canada, it looks like Tesla has been approved to sell the Model S and X in Europe with the new Hardware 4, which means some of these shipments going to Europe right now because these cars are only made in Fremont may already have Hardware 4. On a document dated toward the end of January, the first line under changes to approval says introduction of generation four complex vehicle control system autopilot. No, there was not a timeline given. However, we know Hardware 4 has been in testing now for weeks, so this is definitely a step in the right direction. At this point, we know Model S and X will have Hardware 4, Cybertruck is supposed to have it, so now the question is, when will the Model Y and the Model 3 get it as well? From Reuters, the Department of Transportation next week is expected to finalize a requirement that will pressure Tesla to expand beyond its proprietary charging equipment in the US and add the charger used by its competitors, AKA CCS, essentially to be able to tap into this federal funding. And it sounds like at the meeting Elon just had with White House officials, they did talk about the EV charging program and Tesla's plans to open up its own network. 
It's pretty simple. Any charger that wants to be eligible for federal dollars will have to meet the CCS standard once the rules are finalized next week. Tesla did offer up a proposal in the past that its superchargers should qualify for rebates if they were co-located with CCS chargers that work with the competition, but that request was not seriously considered. I've honestly been wondering why Tesla has not yet opened up a few supercharger locations in the States, and I think it has to do with figuring out the detail and the funding and how all of that's going to work, exactly what Tesla has to do to have access to these funds, and we should hear something relatively soon in my opinion. I wasn't able to find any reporting on this, but Esther on Twitter said Tesla's going to add at least 300 lounges to supercharger locations in Europe over the next five years. Many thanks to BK World for making it happen. Now, BK World does have a small Instagram account, but I did not find anything solid on that account, so we'll keep our eyes open over the next few weeks to maybe learn more. In India, a geological survey just found lithium deposits for the first time in the country. It's way too early to try to analyze this, but over the next few months, I am sure we will hear more about it. This one's interesting. The Department of Transportation is apparently now investigating Neuralink over potentially illegal movement of hazardous pathogens. The Physicians Committee of Responsible Medicine, which is an animal welfare organization, said it obtained emails that suggest unsafe packaging and movement of implants removed from monkeys. These implants may have carried infectious diseases in violation of federal law. Meanwhile, the PCRM said they did not identify any harm as a result of these incidents. And that's about all we have for now. Sounds like VW is ready to speed up its electrification plans. They have a new five-year strategy that was just presented by management to the supervisory board. Full details are set to be unveiled at the company's annual media conference on March 14th. They're still deciding whether they want to build this new Trinity electric sedan vehicle at a new plant or just build it at the main plant in Wolfsburg. Much of this has to be related to VW's Cariad, their software division. The plan is for them to have in the Porsche Macan in 2024 to be the first vehicle using this new premium software architecture. Longer term, their vision is to have a unified software and electronics architecture for all VW group vehicles. It will rely on Qualcomm's system on a chip semiconductors in Europe and the United States. Yes, this is a massive change for VW that's not going to be easy. Their old approach was using 120 small computers controlling different functions. Now they're trying to move all of these functions into one system on a chip, the master chip. To make this change, the Cariad team has been going through intensive workshops and they've been sometimes emotional. If you happen to see that Lyft is down over 36% so far today, you may be thinking, well, they beat on top and bottom line for their earnings, what's going on? It was all about their lower than expected guidance. They said our Q1 guidance is the result of seasonality and lower prices, including less prime time, but Uber's earnings just came out and they were pretty good, so people are wondering what's going on with Lyft. Even removing the expenses for stock-based compensation, Lyft still lost about $380 million for the quarter. And like I said, meanwhile, Uber just reported its strongest quarter ever with new records. This monthly car subscription service idea is not new. GM has tried it, Cadillac has tried it, Porsche, Volvo. A lot of them don't really stick around, so we'll see if it's any different for Hyundai. Customers can reserve an Ionic 5 for $900 a month using their smartphone, but that price does include insurance, maintenance, and 1,000 miles of driving. This is different than a lease though because it's open-ended, meaning you can give the car back and stop these monthly payments at any time. To start though, this program will only be available through eight pilot dealers in these six states. I just wanted to show you these two laughable quotes from an article that was basically just going over dealer pushback to all of the new push for EVs. One dealership owner said, I don't believe that this is a viable long-term solution transitioning to EVs. One, the vehicles are extremely expensive. And two, the infrastructure to support an EV program does not exist in our country. To point one, I would say again, let's look at the total cost of ownership and then no, they are absolutely not extremely expensive. And two, it's actually called the Tesla Supercharger Network. 
And yes, we absolutely need to fix the charging situation for non-Tesla customers, but a lot of people still do charge at home and I know not everybody can, but we can't lose that talking point either. I don't even know what to make of this one. Apparently at Giga Berlin, they have been ordered to stop the construction work that's been taking place. Tesla put 104 stakes on the site without approval because this project that by the way is really just for solar panels is situated on a water protection area. So more red tape in Giga Berlin, I guess we should not be surprised. It sounds like this has nothing to do with vehicle production, just for the solar panel. So we'll see where this goes. Vietnamese company VinFast came out and said it will be reducing its headcount in North America, but they're also saying it will not impact their start of production in the States by 2024. I still don't know what to make of this company. They do have plans to IPO at some point, we don't know when, and they've also said in the long run, we're going to concentrate the manufacturing of EVs as well as key components of EVs in the US. Clearly, VinFast is focused on the US market, but they have delayed their initial shipments of around 1,000 VF8s to February when they were supposed to be delivered in December. This was an article from Automotive News. I just wanted to highlight, they said that GM's Altium platform can accommodate a range of cell form factors and battery chemistries. The platform is chemistry agnostic and can take pouch, cylindrical, or prismatic cells. Something about this one is odd to me though. I don't think Tesla would be able to switch from cylindrical cells to pouch or prismatic. Not that they would, but Tesla has such a level of specificity for those cells that having just whatever you want in there seems like it's not the best approach. Either way, I think it's good info to have stored away. At the end of 2021, Ford owned about an 11% stake in Rivian. Fast forward to today, and that stake is down to around 1%. Elon was asked, when do you imagine a human existence upon Mars? He said, I must admit to being congenitally, which means existent at birth optimistic, SpaceX and Tesla would not exist otherwise, but I think five years is possible and 10 years is highly likely. That caps a fairly quiet news week. You can find me on Twitter at Dylan Loomis 22. Hope you have a safe and wonderful weekend. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.